It was 50 years ago when the civil rights movement launched a worldwide struggle for racial equality. Many of its biggest battles were fought here in the South, and one of its greatest victories was overturning the federal law that allowed racially segregated schools. But half a century later, studies show that segregation is once again on the rise, especially in the South. Southern Ed desk reporter Sue Lincoln looks at why some fear East Baton Rouge Parish is a prime example of why the struggle for educational equality is far from over. An old riddle asks, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. In the decades since East Baton Rouge Parish schools were released from the 1956 federal desegregation lawsuit, the school district, like the elephant in the riddle, has been carved up into ever smaller pieces. While many communities across the South are consolidating city districts into larger countywide districts, East Baton Rouge has gone the opposite direction. The parish now has six separate districts, and there's a push to create a seventh. We've been through a lot in this parish in the last 30 years with, with desegregation, forced busing. Our school system's changed so much over the last 30 years. There's a huge distrust in all communities uh, in this parish about the school system. State Senator Bodie White, who helped with creation of the Central Community School District in 2007, is now leading the charge to give Southeast Baton Rouge its own school district. He says it's not about race, it's about economics. Probably half of the school age kids in this parish go to a private or parochial schools. And many of those schools are very segregated. Okay? And it's become more of a socioeconomic concern. Well, can you c afford to go to another school? White says residents of the area are unhappy with what they see as the current need to have to pay for private education at a cost of twenty to thirty thousand dollars per family. We can pay it, but it's killing us. I can't put any money in my 401k. I can't put any money in their higher education fund. I can't upsize my house as I grow and 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 you know it just you take thirty thousand out of my budget cash every year, it's crippling us. They would love to be able to come back to public schools. And they would like to have a say and how those schools are going to be set up, what kind of curriculum, and they, they, they want it better for their children. Better for their children sounds familiar to Rona Wilford. Now retired from the faculty at Southern University, Wilford was one of the original plaintiffs in the Baton Rouge desegregation case. Our motivations were to be able to have the resources to have the very best education available. And it wasn't at that time so much as being um, able to, to merge with other cultures at that time, uh, we wanted the best resources available. The way the parish school system has been carved up in the past 10 years illustrates one of the main conclusions of the Stanford study, which says that segregation levels do not rise sharply following release from court order, but rather rise gradually and steadily for 10 to 12 years after release. The UCLA study, which in part looks closely at the South, says in schools across the region, white students make up 30 percent or less of the enrollment in the school of the typical black student. In 2003, when East Baton Rouge was released from the desegregation case, public schools were 69 percent black, 28 percent white, and 72 percent poor. Now they are 82 percent black, 12 percent white, and 85 percent poor. And if Southeast Baton Rouge breaks away, East Baton Rouge will be left with a public school population that's 86 percent black, 10 percent white, and 87 percent poor. Wilford says the breakaway districts are defeating the purpose of the 57-year-long desegregation lawsuit. The um, public schools that are offering wonderful programs and the magnet programs, those are the ones that they want to come in and rape. But Senator White says it's not a black and white issue for his constituents. This group that's put this plan together, they're men, women, black, white, Hispanic, they're, uh, they're, they're very diverse. And, and, and you know, they, their, their goal is, is, is truly for the best for the children in that area. Diversity, or the lack thereof, is also a big concern for Adam Knapp, 
president and CEO of the Baton Rouge Area Chamber of Commerce. The chamber was very, very involved uh, in, in trying to get past the desegregation suit uh, in the last decade. So to get past it and then to have potentially that come back to the community would be an awful thing. Last year, the chamber commissioned a study on the potential effects of the Southeast Breakaway District. That study raised the very real concern of Federal Department of Justice re-involvement with Baton Rouge schools. It's something that is a stigma uh, for the community that it hasn't gotten past uh, old, old problems of racial disharmony. And I think those are ones that you want to make sure you don't uh, reintroduce. Knapp says the feds reasserting supervision over Baton Rouge schools could be an economic development killer. Senator White doubts well, the feds would find the new district concern. to be a problem. And if there was intentional segregation, then you might make that case. White says Baton Rouge has moved beyond the racial problems of the past. We have to get past the deseg and the segregation issues and get back to putting our public schools back together. And to do that, you have to get the middle class back engaged. But Rona Wilford says the reasons given for creating this new district to bring the white kids back to public schools while making the remainder of East Baton Rouge schools more racially imbalanced shows that people continue to ignore the real elephant in the room. So many people are in denial that there is no problem, but there is a reality of racism that exists and the impact of that racism happens on a daily basis. And whether or not people want to admit to it or accept it, it exists. For the Southern Education Desk, I'm Sue Lincoln. During the legislative session in April, Senator White will once again introduce a bill to create the new Southeast Baton Rouge District. But Adam Knapp, who heads the Baton Rouge Chamber of Business, says he doubts the political will is there to advance the plan and get it to the next statewide ballot. The Southern Education Desk is a partnership among public radio and television stations across the Gulf South. For more information and stories, log on to southerneddesk.org.